got the grant. And the next day, there was an architecture team meeting in Bloomington, Indiana, to plan development. Check out the guy with the beard there. He's really cool. <laughs> uh, so the architecture team met March 2005 and started to plan the development on this. So the first thing we did was look at the IU's financial system. What What is it? Well, it was an administrative application first. It was a desktop application, so they were used to kind of some of those desktop things. Lots of crud and lots of repetition, all right? Lots and lots of repetition. Oh, sorry. So instead of just, you know, jumping in and starting to deliver the documents and the modules and so forth, uh, this team spent about roughly three months developing infrastructure to help Okay, uh, so uh, the team got together uh, to look at those areas that were kind of repetitive and, you know, tried to build something that would allow those uh, screens to be built a little bit faster and uh, ended up creating various little areas that everybody's probably familiar with by now. Uh, lookups, which are our search screens, inquiry, which is a drill down, maintenance, which is editing, uh, table data, and then general documents to perform some kind of a transaction, and there was a little bit of infrastructure there for dialogues and a little bit of infrastructure for business rules. So this got the name during that week of KNS, or the Quality Nervous System. Okay, so again, you can already see that when the initial beginnings of the framework were really looking at the financial system and the crud operations and, and the repetitiveness that was going on there. From that, uh, the KFS project leads and SMEs, they're starting to talk a little bit. Um, you know, it, it, it's based off that, you know, it's supposed to be a rewrite, but, you know, still institutions needed some flexibility. Um, they like the general system and, and its behavior, but, you know, they, uh, you know, taking IU's data model exactly as it is would not work for everybody. That's just one example. So they needed some level of customization. Some of the things they talked about is they, you know, they needed to be able to customize attributes about data, uh, you know, size of fields like the size of an account number or, you know, the labels for certain fields or the validations around that. They needed to be able to add attributes that the base system might not provide out of the box. They might have attributes that only that institution tracked, um, so it's not going to be part of the out-of-the-box system. So they needed to, to add attributes and, you know, be able to have those as part of the search screens and the maintenance screens and so forth. And, and then, of course, customizing business rules, you know, customizing the particular rules, the values for those. Um, IU might use this object code for a certain reason, but Cornell might use it for a different reason and so forth. So they kind of came back to the, the architecture team and said, you know, we need this, this kind of flexibility here uh, in the system. Uh, in addition, they said, we hope that this system will provide a better upgrade experience than PeopleSoft. Um, IU and many others were just coming out of that kind of phase where they had made lots of customizations to PeopleSoft and then had to go through upgrades and so forth. And so that was a really important driver, too. They said, you know, these, we, these institutions, they need to be able to customize it and not have it be a nightmare when they try to upgrade. So the uh, dev team from that created a few different concepts. One of those was called a data dictionary. And this is essentially just an external repository of metadata um, about the data in the system. So this would contain like the labels and the size and various other things. And because it's external, to the system that would allow um, institutions to tweak those values um, for their particular implementation. Um, it also had, I should put in here, limited uh, ability to uh, configure the UIs for the lookups and the inquiry and the maintenance. So when an institution added custom attribute, they could configure, change the configuration to include that attribute. And um, there's another important piece that's really not that complex, but it's uh, called system parameters. And this is part of 
It's not really part of the development framework. It's part of Rice Core. Uh, but really, it's just a table that holds values, and you can use it for configuring your application or uh, configuring particular business rules. Uh, so that's how the, the customization for the business rules would be handled. So each one of these was in response to those three uh, requests in the previous screen. Anybody have any questions? Okay, so the development gets rolling on the KFS modules. Uh, a little bit later, uh, by the way, um, I'm likely to get some of this wrong, especially when it comes to quality student. <laughs> I sent you a note, Sean, because I wasn't sure about one thing, but. I thought I said you could have Mike about here. Okay, okay, okay. So if I say something wrong, let me know. Yeah. Was the, the stuff that you were running for KFS, was that still primarily being developed internally uh, within IU at that time? Or were there other institutions already involved? Yeah, those those initial uh, partnering institutions, five or six of us. Okay, okay. Hawaii, okay. I mean, IU, Hawaii, Arizona, Cornell. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. But it was all just part of the KFS. Everything was just building the KFS. Okay. 